Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down a prototype of the Crusoe Crew, which is an adventure game where one to four players are plucky young kids exploring for treasure hidden in the panels of a comic book. And the way it works is, as part of setup, each player chooses one of the four members, their are four kid siblings, of the Crusoe crew to control. You might be Gabby, who is particularly good at solving puzzles, because she often gets clues that the other characters don't get. Or you could be little Sarah here, who can talk to animals, and has a pet panther! Or at least uh, they think it's a panther, it looks more like a kitty to me. And so, being able to talk to animals while you're exploring, that could be very, very handy. Or you might be Netta, who is very dexterous and can climb and reach places that nobody else can. Or you might be playing as Kick, who has a big old hammer, and as you might imagine, with that hammer, likes to smash things. You ever see a crack in a wall? That's probably an opportunity for Kick to step up and smash some stuff. So everybody chooses their character. Let's say I'm going to go on ahead and be Kick. And you start out on page one of the adventure. Now, the real game comes with an actual proper bound comic book, uh, and what I've got here is an example of it, but it's all in French, so uh, I've also got the prototypes just on a three-ring binder, but the regular game comes nicely bound, really high-quality print, but still, let's go on ahead and zoom in so you can get an idea of what the experience is like. Now, like I said, this is a narrative adventure. I don't necessarily want to spoil the story, and I certainly don't want to spoil the puzzles and the uh, all the things you can discover, but still, I need to give you an idea of what this game is like, so I'm just going to run down the first few minutes of gameplay, pretty much what you would experience if you had this for yourself, so you can get a sense of what it's like. So here we are. I'm just... Uh, oh, there's some chickens, and Glock! Here come the kids, chasing the chickens. And, um, oh, oh, and now the kids are on the run themselves. And they're just having a good time. But then mom shows up, of course. And then she has some stuff to say. Now, I'm just going to... I'm not even going to bother reading this. You can pause and read it if you want. But let's just go on ahead. And, uh, and then we come inside our little house. You can see there's a little bit to read. The adventure begins! Watch carefully and make the right choices, because this will often be the case that you will find full-page images like this, or big ones that take up most of the page, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to scan the image looking for clues, specifically numbers, as you can see right there. And in fact, this is the only time they'll ever do it. Here's an arrow! In case you didn't see it, there's a number! The number 190! So what the game is saying is, hey, we should go... If we want to find out what this old man in the bed has to say, we should go to entry 190. And everybody would do that. Everybody who has their own book would just go on ahead and turn to 190 and continue on with the story. But now, here's there are some interesting things going on here. I'm playing as Kick right now, and in this room, it doesn't look like there's any cracks on the wall, any things I could smash. So, for me, it's pretty straightforward. Let's just go check out 190, everybody. But let's say I was playing with somebody else, and uh, my teammate was Netta here. If we look at Netta's version of page 2, you may look around and say, hey, there's the 190 again, but oh, wait a minute, what's this? Again, this is the only time the game ever makes it so obvious. There's something else. Because Netta can climb, you can see there's another number that he can go check out. He can climb up that and get his uh, you know fingers in the cookie jar, apparently. But that's not all that's going on here. Because, hey, there's Purr, the panther, you know, the, the pet cat. What's going on with there? Well, if you're playing as Netta or Kick, you can't talk to that cat. But if you're playing as Sarah, you can. So, if you were playing as Sarah, if one of your teammates was Sarah right now, and you look at the page from her perspective, she says, wait a minute, there's another number right there. So, she can go check that out. And so there will often be situations where, you know, everybody can see some stuff, but only some players can. So, um, you know, the team will have to pause for a second while Sarah goes and talks to an animal. And, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to turn to page one or, you know, entry 185. But if you want to, um, Purr generally has some good hints, as do the other animals that you encounter. But let's just go on ahead and go back to Kick here. Because I, I, since he didn't see anything, or heck, if you're playing the game for the second or third or fourth time, and you know the basics, you know what all those other things are, we still got to go to 190. So let's just go on ahead, and you can see down at the bottom of the page, there's reminders of what all the entries are. We're trying to find 190, and here we are. So there he is. Oh, 
Pop is not looking very good. As you can see, you can read it if you want to pause and see what he has to say. And then there's a little bit more. So that's kind of setting up the stage. And now we got to go back to page three, right back to where we were. And what's this? Dun, dun, dun. Someone has shown up. And again, feel free to pause and read if you like. There's some silliness here. This is basically just setting the scene. And uh, basically, this is, this is the, saying the story of how we, as a bunch of kids, are going to get roped into doing our dad's job and going out and finding treasures for this crazy pirate. So again, you can go on ahead and read along. Uh, this is not only uh, setting the stage of the story, but it's also kind of explaining some of the actual gameplay. This one is especially important uh, because he's given you clues uh, over here about where you might want to travel because he's about to hand you a map and we're about to get that map. And then he's got a little bit more to say. And finally, uh, it says, uh, remember, right, are you ready? Go to page five, which is the next page. And so we set off on our brave adventure down to the dock to find our boat. We get on the boat. And then finally, the time has come. Let's figure out where we're going to go. Here's where the map comes in. It's a map of the islands. We are here. As you can see, it's a lovely place. Hey, there's Island 44. There's something over there for Atma Island. There's 53. There is, um, you know, well, can you read that? You might want to read that very closely to figure out what's going on with that particular island. Uh, there's number 21, etc., etc. And we could go to any of these places. Now, remember, the guy did have something to say of if you paused and read about what island we should go to to try and find the most treasure. Now, right now, I'm going to say, hey, let's come over here to Island 91. We decide this as a group. And now, by the way, on the back of this map is the rest of the rules for the game. Uh, talking about what to do if we need to split up. Uh, because that will happen sometimes when one character has a, a path that they can follow that nobody else can follow. And also information about how to solve riddles, how we score points, uh, a few uh, tips, and ultimately a way to keep track of our progress because you can get halfway through an adventure and then, you know, pause for the night, put the books away, and then pick up where you left off. But anyway, that's all on the other side. We are heading over to Island 91. So everybody, turn your books to Entry 91. So we just keep on looking for them. As you can see, I'm trying to minimize what you're going to see. Although the reality is, as you're you know thumbing through these pages, you will see stuff. It's just a bunch of disconnected uh, elements. Like, here it is. Entry 91. Here's the island we are approaching. And as you might imagine, well, you can see what we're supposed to do. But while you're looking at that, it's kind of hard not to notice, hey, at some point, we might see this weird symbol. Or, oh, look, um, we're going to find something under a rock. Or, you know, Kick is going to be uh, doing some good stuff here, getting us out of some trouble. And here's another path over here. If we ever find ourselves... Um, you know, uh, number 90, there's a path with a monkey. Would we talk to that monkey if we have Sarah? And what's this? A big door, etc., etc. But this is what we came looking for. Uh, number 91, which tells us to go to 140. So let's go on ahead and find 140. And boom. Now here's one of these things I was talking about. Go ahead and pause and read if you like. And this is a big old full page image. And everybody should be studying their version of the image, looking to see if there is interesting stuff to pursue. Because again, not every player sees the same stuff. A lot of times you do. Maybe even most of the times you do. But sometimes there's unique stuff. Now, we got to figure out, hey, where are we going to go? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious we could go to 83. That one just jumps right out at you. But if you're paying attention, you might notice a couple of other numbers as well that would indicate different places we go. Have you spotted them? Well, if you haven't, I'm going to spoil a little bit. Hey, look, what's that? Is that a 67? Let's go this way. Let's see. Uh, let's go the dangerous way, shall we? So if we go to 67, let's find that. Uh, then we find ourselves here at a gate. Okay. And uh, as you can see, if we want to go up to that gate, we uh, go to 146. And what's this? 
The kitty is checking something out, but I'm not playing as Sarah. And you know, Jen and I, we've been playing this as a two-player game, uh, so we've only ever had access to two characters at a time, which meant we've had to pass a lot of opportunities like this that makes us want to go back and play the game again and see what we've missed. So anyway, I'm not as Sarah right now. I'm Kick, so there's nothing I can do about that. I cannot find out what Purr has discovered. But if we move on ahead to 146, we'll get up to that gate, and let's see what we find. 146. And here we are at the gate. Okay. Now, um, if you do not know how to get past this gate, go back to 140, which is the way we came. So, we want to figure out how to get past this gate. And you'll notice there is a symbol up here. This symbol is because this is a puzzle. We have reached the first. And now, this is a really simple puzzle. Some of the puzzles get really complex and intricate and all kinds of stuff. This is a really simple one. We need to figure out how do we get past this gate, um, which generally means we need to figure out there, what's the number. And you might look and say, well, hey, if I look really closely, I see a 1 and a 2. And a three. And you might say, well, hey, well, should I do 123? I don't know. See, often when you're trying to figure out puzzles, you could take an educated guess as to what you're going to do. So you might say, well, I see a, a one, two, three. So what the heck? Let's go to 123. But now remember, this is the symbol for this gate puzzle. So what happens is if I go to 123, you might say, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. How did we get here? And if you look, if this was the right place, there would be the matching symbol right here, that, that triple line gate symbol. Since we don't see the symbol, we know this is wrong. We took a guess, and it was wrong. So go back where we came from and try again. So now, I am not going to solve this puzzle for you right now, um, but I will point out something else. Right now here, I'm still Kick. And as you can see, Kick gets to do a lot of stuff at various points throughout the story, but so far on this path, he hasn't seen anything to blow up. But let's say his brother, Netta, was the character we were playing. And let's go to Netta's version of Entry 145. And hey, it's the same gate although printed on a higher quality because this is the final. But wait a minute, do you notice anything different, folks? Do you? Well, if you do, then you know that Netta has something that he could do. And that would be an example of how things split up. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go any further into the story. But this gives you an idea of how you travel and how you have to work together because different characters will have access to different outcomes. Once again, you can see Kick here. He's going to blow something up at some point. Whereas if you looked at entry 145 in Netta's book, it's a radically different thing. Ned is going to find himself having to deal with this gear cog puzzle all by himself, more than likely, depending on how things have addressed. And now, that is the uh, whole experience of this game. We travel through the books. We look for clues. Um, if I knew how to get past here, which I'm not going to do for you, that would lead us on to other stuff. And generally, you're going to find, uh, you know, throughout this kind of random scattershot collection of panels, big panels with lots of things to look for. Treasure panels where you get the rewards, rubies, and um, statues and stuff like that that are worth different points. But often, you'll find different puzzles that have to be solved. Sometimes players have to do them together. Sometimes they have to do them separately. And when you're not solving puzzles and getting treasure, you are um, you know, exploring. Hey, what's this? Uh, let's go to 61 and see what it is. Um, oh, if we come in here, well, if we want to check that out, we got to do 86. Um, and this game just offers so much joy of fun and exploration and discovery. Jen and I have enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, this is obviously designed, first and foremost, to play with families. Uh, parents and their kids getting together, everybody sitting around with their own book and deciding as a group, where do we go? Hey, we've come to this big room. What do we do? Uh, there's lots of different ways we can go. Does anybody see any special stuff that's unique to them? And occasionally getting stopped and stumped by um, sometimes simple puzzles, sometimes really complex, difficult, challenging puzzles. Um, but there's another thing you always have to look for. Let me see if I can find one really quickly. Uh, sometimes you will go 
to a particular pa uh, panel, like uh, 82 here, and you'll notice there's this symbol. This symbol means time is passing. And you're supposed to keep track of how many days we've been exploring. If you read that intro that I thumbed through, you know that we have five days to find as much treasure as possible. Once you've gone through five days, we're done. We uh, go to a particular page in the book, and we tally up our score and see how well we did. And then we can try again, explore different avenues, take different characters, and and have more unique adventures. Folks, this is a blast. Like I said, Jen and I have been having a great time just sitting on the couch, just chilling, relaxing, having fun little adventures. Great uh, experience. So much fun. Great art. Great sense of humor. Some puzzles really tough, tough, um, tricky ones. But overall, a great experience, Crusoe Crew. And that's the rundown, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye